All right, so in this video, we're gonna combine multiple tabs of data to one master list using filter function. I have this partial data one worksheet that has 15 rows here. I have partial two that has 15 rows here, partial three that also has about, I'm gonna delete that, 14 rows. So we wanna combine all of these to one master. And we're also gonna make this in a way that if we keep adding to this partial data worksheets, it's gonna update our master and give us a full list. Now I've done a video like this before using query function. Now in this one, I'm gonna use filter function to do something very similar, but I'm gonna add a little twist to it to make it a little more interesting. So let's start by adding the new worksheet. So I'm gonna add a worksheet and call this one master. Obviously the name of this doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. And I'm gonna start by simply going here and copying this column headers. So copy those, go to master and paste. So just to pay attention here, all this partial data worksheets, they have the same columns in the same order. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the master and I'm gonna start with a filter function. Open parentheses. Filter function needs two arguments, an array and condition. So the array is gonna be the data from partial data one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the data. I'm not including headers in this, just the data. Now, the complicated part here is that I want this to be updated as I keep adding. So I cannot just select the data until the row 15. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna drop this reference 15 out of here to just get to the end of the column. So this selects the whole thing, including all the blanks going down, comma. Now the purpose of filter function is gonna be to remove all these blanks, because if we don't, we will get all those blanks as well, but we want just the data without the blanks. And to do this, we need to find a column out of our data we can trust. And if we cannot find a column, then I'll probably show you how to do that as well, but then it's gonna make the formula a lot more complicated. So if you do have a column you can trust, so let's say we can trust this first column of dates, then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select this column of dates, starting from that same row and going down, drop the reference 15 out of it because I wanna send it all the way down. So basically if you look here, it goes from A2 through G and this one A2 through A because we only selected this column A. But it should start at the same point. See the second row here and second row here. Now in this column A, believing that every row that has some data in it is gonna always have some data in this date column, we can say that if the date column is empty, like this rows, then the whole row is empty. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make it not equal to by doing this greater than, less than, or less than, greater than, whatever you call this thing, sign, and I'm gonna say it should not be blank. Close parentheses and hit enter. And it should just basically be the same 15 rows, but even though we selected the whole column going down, because we filtered like this, it's not gonna include all the blanks below. So it really goes to row 15. So that's my first filter function that returns this. So I'm gonna leave this alone for a second and go below and create a very similar filter function for the second partial data. So I'll go here and do filter and go to partial data two, select the range, drop the end reference, comma, then select the first column, drop the end reference, and make sure it's not equal to blank, close parentheses, hit enter. So now I want to combine these two together. So in order for me to do this, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open the second formula, copy the formula without the equal sign. I'm gonna delete this formula from here because I'm not gonna need it. And I'm gonna go back to my first formula while I have the second one copied. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to this first formula and start with an array curly bracket in the beginning of this filter function. Go to the end of this filter function. I'm gonna do a semicolon to add another range to this, and I'm gonna paste my second filter function right after that. If I wanted to combine just these two, I would just close my curly bracket right now and hit enter, and now we should have those first two 
combined together. So now at this point, I also want to add partial data three to this entire thing. So I'm gonna go back to this and what you do, you just keep adding to this array. So right now I have the first two, I'm gonna do a semicolon and do another filter function. And inside of this filter function, we have to provide the range from partial data three and see that dropped out of there. That's not good. But the good thing about this is that you don't even have to do this by clicking, we can type. And most of these filter functions are pretty much gonna be the same over and over. So I don't really have to recreate this whole thing all over again, although I could just create this third filter function and copy and paste it. But a lot easier for me is to simply just copy one of these previous ones and paste it right over here. And all I have to do is just change the name of the worksheet. So the third one is called partial data three. So I'm gonna switch this to partial data three and again, partial data three in this range as well. The rest is gonna be exactly the same thing because it's in the same position, hit enter, and this should be everything combined. So if I just check how many rows I have total, 42, as you can see, and the first one is our headers. So 41 total records, which means See, we got 14 here, not including the headers. We got 14 here, not including the headers. So that's 28 and go to the third one. And we got 13 here. So 28 plus 13, we got our 41, which is what I have here. So now the nice thing about this is that we can go back and let's say I want to add something to this partial data too. And I go here and add a new record. Let's go see if we can find this record in our data set. So if I go back, let's go to our master and try to find this. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. There it is. That's our new record. So if you have more worksheets, you basically just keep repeating this entire thing. Just go here, do another semicolon, another filter function. This is what I've done before using query function. But here, what I'm gonna do, and I could do this probably with query function too, but I just prefer to do this with filter function in this case. I want to add an extra column here that tells me which tab this information is coming from and which row in that tab that information is on. So to do this, we're gonna make our formulas a little more complicated. To explain you what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna just keep this as is and make a duplicate out of this and go back and remove all these other filter functions and just keep one filter function and remove this array. I'll go back and update that for all of them combined, but I wanna show you how I'm gonna do this for the first one and then for the rest. So I'm gonna go back to this filter function and as my first argument here, I'm gonna take this range that I've provided and put this in array brackets like this to convert it to an array so I can do some extra magic in this. Right now, I'm gonna just press enter and that should work exactly the same way. Now I want to go back and add an extra column. So I'm gonna go back after this first range of my data, I'm gonna do a comma and to add this extra column, I'm gonna go ahead and start typing in quotes, the text as the name for that worksheet, data tab one. You can call it pretty much anything you want. So I could just call it partial data one, which would probably be a good idea. I'm just trying to show you that this is not really connected to the worksheet name. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little bit extra text here. I'll also just do like a dash separator and I'll say row and space. And after that, I want it to say which row from that tab that's supposed to be in. And to do that, I'm gonna go after this text qualifier quotation, do an ampersand to concatenate the row number. And to get the row number, I'm gonna use the function row. This function will have to get the range to give you the row numbers. And the range is gonna be pretty much the same thing we have over here. So I'm gonna just copy this part and paste it inside of this row function. So with this change, if I just hit enter, 
see all of these rows have an extra column now added to them, which basically gives us the name that we typed and then the row number in that particular worksheet. So now I'm gonna go back to this. Now, one thing I'm gonna mention before I move on, if you have a different setting for your locality in your spreadsheet, your separator here, when you add a new column right here between this first range and this extra column thing that we're adding might not be a comma. So the most common second separator is this slash thing. So try that one if comma doesn't work. So for me, that's comma, I'm gonna do that. So now we'll just do the final thing. We did one model to create this combination thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna do this in the formula bar now because it's getting too crazy around here. So I'm gonna put this in curly brackets from the beginning and the end to basically convert this to an array. Hit enter right now, it's gonna be the same thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this whole thing, this filter function without the curly brackets, go after that, do a semicolon and go for the next one. Now, one thing you can do when these formulas get really long, you can press option enter or alt enter to move this to the next line. This doesn't really change what the formula is gonna be. It just basically keeps it a little more organized. If you want it, you could just continue this all on one line. For me, I'm just gonna go here, hit some spaces from here just to align everything so everything looks nicer. So I need to do three worksheets, so I need to repeat this again. So I need one of these filter functions all over again. So copy that, do another semicolon, alt enter or option enter if you're on a Mac, and then just basically paste the next one. And you can just keep repeating this as many times as you need for different worksheets. So all I have to do right now is just go and address the name of different tabs. So this second one is called partial data two. So for me, everything is pretty nice because everything is like one, two, three, it's gonna be easy to change. But if you have some crazy different names for your other worksheets, you just have to match those names. So I'm gonna do two for this one, three for this one. And again, just keep changing for all of them, so. Just like that. Gonna keep everything else the same, hit enter. And then just add another nice column here so it looks pretty. So now, for example, if I look at this one and I want to know where it came from, that should be data tab two, row five. So let's find this. So this is my partial data two and row five. We can easily now find it because we have a nice way to kind of show the location of that particular thing. So this one, new balance thing we have here, that's 496, should be tab to row six. So we go here, row six, right here. If we change this number to 900, go back to our master, that's also updating here. Now if I decide to add something to first worksheet, And let's go check this out. So it should show that in our data one, row 16, there is this. So let's go back and check. So data one, row 16, there it is. Now remember, this entire thing is based on the assumption that we can trust that in our column date, there is always gonna be something. However, if we didn't have one of these, for example, see this row 14 in partial data one, we didn't have a date in this column. Now it's not gonna have this in that combined data once I remove this. So this is row 14 from data one. So let's go check. So right there, we're missing that row, it's not here. So if you don't have a column you can trust for this, then this formula is gonna get a lot more complicated. See this part? That's the one we need to change, where we basically say the date column is not equal to blank. So we have to just grab every single column. The more columns you have, the more complicated this is gonna get. So what we need to do if we have multiple columns and we cannot trust any of them, then our formula is gonna get a little more crazy. I'm just gonna copy this range, go here, do an ampersand to concatenate and paste that again 
and I have to do this for as many columns as I have. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, this location is a column we made out of nowhere. Real columns in our data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to do this seven times. So I'm gonna do again, ampersand, paste, ampersand, paste, ampersand, paste, ampersand, paste. So hopefully I got it enough times. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe not, seven. And what I have to do, I just have to change every column to the next column. So this is column A, then I'm gonna switch this to column B, and then the next one is column C. And then you can probably see where this is going. So I'm basically just concatenating all those columns together and I need to make sure that after I concatenate, that's not equal to blank. So if I'd enter right now, we should get that row back. See, now we got that row 14, even though date doesn't exist. So this way we can combine no matter what happens in our data sets but then our formula is gonna get a lot more crazier because remember, I only did this so far for the first one. So you would just have to do this for the second filter function all over again, just do this whole, every single column concatenated. So I'm just gonna do this in the formula. I'll just try to speed it up in a video so you can see what the final result would look like. So here it is, this is our final result. So each one of these should only include the name of one of the tabs. That should work and that should create our combined master sheet. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.